the, the, the following two points. What's the difference between a resume and a CV? Maybe in the US it's a little bit different um, compared to the rest of the world. And my second question for you is you mentioned ATS. Could you explain um, how one could overcome ATS? Yeah, absolutely. So um, for your first question, um, the difference between American uh, resume and CV mostly is that um, the CVs are more of a detailed encompass of your entire work life thus far. Um, and it's very detailed as far as um, also personal information that, um, that you wouldn't include in like American resume. We don't usually have our marriage or our dates or any of those questions because in the U.S. those things are allowed to be asked. Um, in California, you can't even ask somebody if what their salary was half the time. You can only ask two questions. Did they work there and are they rehirable? So the American a resume is much more different because there's questions that we can't ask. And that's why um, the CVs on the international side are so detailed because it's a much different process. It's a more like more detailed person process. And then, okay, was, you know, there's even religious belief section on there. There's absolutely no way there would be that on an American resume. Um, what American resumes are usually one to two pages. And if it, it's anything more, it's considered a portfolio. Great, great. And are you seeing maybe across your clients or even US focused, um, the likes of software screening resumes or is it human reading them? Um, I see that a lot of our companies, especially around me, I have uh, YouTube, Google, Cisco, um, Apple. I have all of them literally within driving distance and all of them use the ATS software. So it does pre-scan your resume before it hits that human body. But once it hits that human body, they are getting calls. So getting past that ATS software is really imperative. And one of the things I tell my clients is you have to take four to six heavy hitting job descriptions and start looking for those common variable qualifications. If you are account manager and you keep on seeing the phrases international relations and in all six job descriptions, boom, bullet point international relations somewhere in your resume so the recruiter can be like okay they have these key elements that we're looking for now let me read about her because not a lot of or him not a lot of people realize that the customer experience section of the resume is considered the optional part of the resume because you should really be coming off qualified before they dedicate to be reading one to two pages of you so screaming qualified in your summary your skill set and your education right off the bat is what you need to focus on and then everything else is interview talking pieces. I think I've been doing a lot of research and this is what's going to be the coming um, way of, of a CV. So for example, the company might give you a list of five skills and you have to write a paragraph within your resume um, of how you can use those skills to benefit the company. In terms of hard versus soft skills, where do you list those on your CVs? Um, I think it's really important that you need to come off as qualified, if anything, first. So if your soft skills and your hard skills match with what you're seeing on those job descriptions, those that's what you need to be utilizing. But I usually say use the soft skills and what you're describing as yourself within your work experience section and really use the big bang hard skills in the top part of your resume to, again, come off qualified ASAP before they decide that they're going to read two pages uh, because they should not be reading two pages for, to see if you are a qualified candidate. It's your job to come off qualified. It's their job to pass on a qualified candidate. So a lot of people assume, oh, when they get my resume, they read it. No, honey, they're scanning to see if you're qualified and then they read it. 